Coming up on today's episode, our Apple TV showed up a little early. Blu-ray hell when a new disc won't play. Bose makes an HD TV. And of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of October 5th, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com, Gamefly.com, and Netflix.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air, thumbsticks, whatever. If it's in HD, we like it. Yeah. I, I got one thing to say before we start the show. All right. Dear Funimation. Please let us know the release date for Fooly Cooly. That's F L C L on Blu ray. Yeah. Funimation, huh? Funimation. That's the company that's got the rights to do, you know, Fooly Cooly on Blu ray in the United States. All right. If well, you're in Canada or England or Australia or, you know, Fiji or, <laughs> or, or, or Finland, I, I don't know who has the distribution rights there. Understood. I'll ask you about it. I want to see it. <laughs> Hey, and while we're asking for release, release dates, uh, dear Hulu, please, please let us know when the release date for Hulu Plus on the Roku box and TiVo Premiere is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm itching. The whole 2010 or this fall thing just isn't working for me. We want to obsess and count the days and have countdown parties. I I'm just saying, you know? Yeah. I that's, that's what I'm looking for. We're into this stuff. <laughs> Give us a date. Give us a date to Hulu dream Plus. about and obsess over. I did finally get my invite, though. So you did. I can pay 10 bucks a month now if I want to participate and help them develop software. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, you've got an iPhone now. So there's I, a reason. Shh. <laughs> he doesn't want to admit it's it. all awesome. That brings us to the other thing that happened this week, the glorious overnighted from China delivery of my Apple TV. That was actually really fun to watch the tracking. It was supposed to be here Friday. Um, we'll talk about it a little later in the Customs show. must love you. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, my goodness. Hey, it's got six woofers, waveguide technology, mm -hmm. and a 46-inch 1080p screen. And that's about all we know about the new Bose Video Wave Entertainment System. Well, that's all we know about the HDTV side of it, at least. So. Yeah, I, I like the picture that says, Invisible Speakers, Integrated HD Picture, which is, yeah, in Integrated HD Picture. <laughs> this is Bose <laughs> pretentious talk for, we built some bitchin' speakers into a 46-inch flat panel. The waveguide technology is basically the folded uh, subwoofer stuff that, they, that makes their clock radios sound like a symphony orchestra. I, I, you know, it, it, it's expensive, and I'm not a big fan of their headphones, but I gotta say that whole clock radio action thing from Bose is pretty impressive. Yeah, well, yeah. Both sniping aside, I'm very curious to see and to try out the whole super simple click pad remote control, which takes the 80 odd buttons that complicate a typical remote and wraps them around the edge of the screen. It could look good. Hopefully, it's not a glossy surface with just fingerprint collection. Anyway. And now the text, well, it's like this little, you know, simple remote control. It kind of looks like the Roku remote, but probably bigger. And then the actual buttons, like you, you Ooh. do sort of gesture based stuff. It looks like interesting. Yeah. Uh, Bose also said, quote, your purchase includes the highest level of Bose customer care, including delivery and setup in your home, quote, un <laughs> end quote. It better, though, because at uh, $53.49 price tag is $5,349. That's pretty steep. For a 46-inch screen with some audio? It's 46-inch screen with magnificent Bose wide gate, wide gate, wide gate. Yeah, it's, look, it's a surround sound system built into a 46-inch flat pad. That is a lot of money, even so close. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'd like to see some people's suggestions as to what you would do to build out a nice entry-level entry level home theater system for, <laughs> I don't know, 5400 bucks. I think there's quite a bit you can do there. Yeah, including new furniture and probably wall cover. 46 inch screen though? <laughs> it's only 53.49. No comment. I want to thank AJ Tronic for tweeting me this news from the telegraph.co.uk. Quote, a statement from Lucasfilm, the US director's film production company on the Star Wars website said, and I quote, the live action Star Wars saga will be converted to 3D. And I quote, there are few movies that lend themselves more perfectly to 3D. From the Death Star trench run to the Tatooine pod race, the Star Wars saga has always delivered an entertainment experience that is completely immersive. And I continue quoting, the cutting edge conversion will take that immersion to the next thrilling level, Ooh. end quote. Industrial Light and Magic, the uh, visual effects company which will supervise the project, said converting the films will take 
time. <laughs> <laughs> Visual effects supervisor John Knoll said, quote, it takes a critical and artistic eye along with an incredible attention to detail to be successful. It's not something that you can rush if you want to, if you want to expect good results. And I continue quoting, for Star Wars fans, we will take our time applying everything we know both aesthetically and technically to bring the audience a fantastic new Star Wars experience, end quote. Even, I'm, uh, I'm ill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop. <laughs> and, I, and I realize a lot of you don't share our love of the original version of Star Wars and our belief that somebody Mystical. really should stop George Lucas, who apparently goes, hey, that Avatar was cool. I can do 3D. I got money and time and a desperate audience. Um, winding aside, I like what Amazing Toaster said in response on Twitter, quote, this time Greedo shoots the audience. It's pretty cool. I dig yeah. that. That brings us to a very good pair of tweets from Christy Jabay. Tweet one. So the second Iron Man 2 Blu-ray disc skips two. Did some digging. Turns out my Blu-ray player hasn't been supporting a lot of new movies. Grr. Tweet two. Last update issued for my LG BD390 player was April 23rd, 2010. It's labeled as discontinued, and it appears LG doesn't care. Ooh. We'll get to LG and whether or not they care or not in a second. But... Let's talk about updates. Yeah, Blu-ray's complicated. Uh, Blu-ray wasn't done when they... The Blu-ray spec, for all intents and purposes, wasn't done when they shipped the Blu-ray hardware. Exactly. The they discs. had very ambitious plans, but the plans weren't fully realized in the hardware until literally a couple of years later. Yeah. We had literally finalized hardware in terms of what they wanted from the spec, what we wanted from the hardware and everything, and that included things like the picture-in-picture -picture feature and the ability to connect to the internet and stream content that way. Those were two of the later items that got added into Blu-ray. Anyway, when the player that you currently have uh, can no longer be updated to support, say, new encryption keys or things to support playback for specific titles usually, uh, there's usually a handful of titles that always have problems, essentially you're left with a dead box, and uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I will yeah. say, though, that the Iron Man disc in particular was a curious case in that when it first came out, the original uh, Iron right. Man 1, when it first came out, some of the early discs they sent out to people like me for looking at it in terms of testing and review, that disc completely failed in a lot of players. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first time we experienced, boom, uh, here we got a disc, brand new player, why isn't it working? There is no update. It's, it's affecting a whole series of players. And it wasn't right. LG in this case. Turned out it was Samsung. But quickly that disc was pulled back. They reissued it and everything mm -hmm. was fine from that point forward. But those firmware updates are important. And I, I, to this day, really the only player that stood the test of time from day one has been the PlayStation 3. Yeah. That that will continue to be the reference player that I'll compare all the other players to in terms of at least compatibility and feature performance. I'll say Oppo is a company that's really good with updates. Sony's really good with updates. I, you know. But even the companies that do provide these updates, once a product like this case, the BD390 from LG right. is over a year old. It's almost a year and a half old at this point. Uh, I don't remember the last time I actually had my hands on one, but mm -hmm. it, it's sad that that's the lifespan for a product when you have discs that are incompatible. Here's the thing, though. You should always try to contact tech support at the company because it looks, actually looks like LG is working on this one. Uh, AVSForum.com is a pretty big thread. It's, if you haven't spent any quality time totally. at AVS Forum, I highly recommend it if you're in the home theater or any kind of audio video technology. They have a thread talking about LG tech support, and again, it looks like LG is working on it. One of the, what, one of the people inside, on the thread basically was like, crap, this doesn't work, and LG tech support sucks, and then like three hours later posts, wow, I got an email from LG tech support, and they said, you know, they forwarded this to the engineers and they're working on it. I'm actually wondering at some point if this is something we start looking at when we're rating Blu-ray players. A bl or you could call it Blu-ray's dirty secret is, is that yeah. no player save the PlayStation 3 is technically going to be future compatible with discs. Future proof. A future proof. I mean, it's just... Well, uh, you're saying that until the PS4 comes out. Well, uh... Yeah, and the, but the PS3 will have had a run for right. how long then? And it's like, okay, there was one, you point to one <laughs> player. Granted, an expensive outlay for a player nowadays compared to other pricing, but at least they kept updating that platform to make it compatible with everything coming forward. And yeah. that was, that's really the biggest thing it has going for it. All that said, before anybody panics and decides to go back to standard definition television and, and refuses to order a Blu-ray player, the vast majority of discs play just fine. High-profile releases, you know, Avatar would, would be an example, although there didn't seem to be much in the way of the problems of that. Obviously, the Iron Man um, 1 and Iron Man 2 have created issues with new players. Kick-Ass, actually one of our favorite movies around here. Uh, apparently, a lot of LG players had trouble with Lionsgate features. They update the protection schemes on those discs 
discs with every major new release. Right. So those things are in constant cycle and change. So if you have a player that can't keep up with that, or it, it pings something in the right. player that suddenly goes, oh, I really can't deal with that. Yeah. that that's where you run into the problems. One thing to try, though, on any player you are having problems like that with that I've, I've, I've tried once or twice and it's worked is disable the function that connects to the internet, mm -hmm. uh, the, the BD Live functionality of the player. Turn that off to see if that perhaps prevents it from pinging the net to see if it'll play that disc. It's, it's worth a shot. I've had it work in one or two cases, actually with the original Iron Man disc fiasco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, this time around, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough when people invest their money and then they kind of get, yeah. I hate to say well, it, but you're buying a, a dated piece of technology the minute you buy it. Well, all technology is dated. Yeah, that's true. It. Just, yeah, you, yes. you, what's, what's scary about HDTVs and Blu-ray players is now things that you normally thought of as appliances. I mean, you know, okay, some DVD players had updates, but the reality is you thought of it like a clock radio. You bought it, it lived, it died, you moved on, but Blu-ray players, you know, if you haven't done it, find the manual, figure out how to do an update. And update. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. All Love sorts of cool. It might boot faster. <laughs> that too. Take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly.com. You like video games? Robert does. Matter of fact, when he's not sleeping, he's probably playing video games. Yes. You want to get your video game on without wasting all of your money? You should be going towards college tuition or feeding your children. Check out Gamefly.com. They got over 7,000 new and classic titles, consoles, handhelds. They got it all. And for just $15.95 a month, you can run one to four games at a time. You can hold on to them until you're done because there's no late fees and no due dates. It's pretty slick. When you're done playing the game, send it back. Gamefly fires out the next available game on your list so you can keep your gaming thing rolling. If you try it, you don't like it, fire it back another day or two, you'll have a new game. It's good. You want to keep the game? Click Keep It on the Gamefly website. They're going to sell it to you at a discounted price and mail you the case manuals free of charge. I like free. And you know what you're going to like? A free two-week trial. AT Nation fans can score a free two-week trial of Gamefly.com. If you go to Gamefly.com slash HD Nation, some restrictions do apply. See the site for details and please support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly.com. It was simple enough. Pick up some RAM for a home theater PC build, grab the Iron Man 2 on the way out. Then Roger calls. We need a top five list for this week. And I'm in Fry's, the electronic store engineer to strip geeks from their cash and their savings from heat shrink tubing to two terabyte hard drives, telescopes to HDTVs, and more beef jerky than I've ever seen outside of Oklahoma. Not to mention a metric ton of Blu-rays priced to match Amazon as you roll down to the checkout line. Yeah. Yes. Good place to swipe the card. Oh boy. So $190 and one long ass wait in the checkout line. Later, I bring you the top five movies I wasn't going to buy but wanted and got when Roger called. <laughs> Iron Man 2 doesn't count because it was the one disc I went in there to get, but the transfer is excellent and this scene rocks, so just watch this. Number one, saving Private Ryan, because the opening scene is one awesome reminder about why I should never whine when things get frustrating at work or home. It's a pretty sick DTS HDMA 5.1 surround soundtrack. Two, the video transfer, spectacular. Benchmark quality, audio quality, it's flawless. Uh, it's actually kind of a shameless movie. Pretty much makes me want to cry every time I watch it, or I can watch it more than once or twice a year. Number two, Bull Durham, because my wife loves this movie about baseball love and growing up almost as much as I do, and this, a bottle of red wine, and. Uh, an instant date night might distract her so she doesn't notice the big honking charge at fries from this morning. I You're like wish... a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> like an evil ninja. I only wish the level of detail on the Blu-ray was as sharp as the color accuracy and the lack of compression artifacts. Not the greatest transfer, but you know what? They didn't spend a lot of money shooting it either. Three, speaking of growing up, Carol Reed's awesome The Third Man. This is a cinema classic. Holly Martins goes to Vienna and finds out that in post-war Vienna, things aren't always what they seem, and his best friend from childhood may be well, watch the movie, you'll find out. This is masterful black and white expressionist and camera work. Blu-ray.com says the Criterion 
recent release on Blu-ray had a more perfect video transfer, but those are out of print. And if you're lucky, you can find a used copy for 40 bucks, maybe 60 or 80 if you're not so lucky. And in the words of Blu-ray.com, quote, the Studio Canal version, the one that's for sale now, would probably be seen as mostly exemplary if Criterion had done their magic in a previous release. Seriously awesome classic flick. Number four, Watchmen, director's cut. We talked about this movie a lot. It's awesome, it's perfect for showing off your home theater, and Roger said I can't borrow his copy anymore. Five, Ponyo, not the best movie from Studio Ghibli or director Miyazaki. For that, you gotta look for Spirited Away or Kiki's Delivery Service or the epic, mind-altering, so cool anime, My Neighbor Totoro, which my child loves. And somebody needs to release My Neighbor Totoro on Blu-ray. Disney, are you listening? Anyhow, my son couldn't stop talking about Ponyo for days after he saw it, so it's on the list. And since he's been carrying around a plastic whale, my son, by the way, not Miyazaki, for the past 48 hours, for seven bucks in the bargain rack, how could I resist National Geographic's Kingdom of the Blue Whale, narrated by Magnum P.I., excuse me, Tom Selleck. And because we can never stop at six or seven movies on the top five list, let's wrap it with one of my favorite spooky-ass films of all time, treated <laughs> to a near-perfect transfer by Warner Brothers that brings out all the evil in the shadows and the black corners. 1995's pairing of Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman and the classics of English lit and an oh-so-sketchy Kevin Spacey 7. All I'm going to say is, what's in the box? And if you don't know what that means, watch the movie. It's going to change your whole view on postal delivery forever. Wrong! Wrong! It's so awesome. It's so... Don't watch it at night when you're alone. Yes, watch it at night when you're alone. New releases? Let's do them. Hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of October 5th, 2010. First up, Mad Max. Released over 30 years ago before anyone knew the name Mel Gibson, Mad Max is an Australian post-apocalyptic flick with a Western feel. It's also the first Australian film to be shot with a widescreen anamorphic lens. Thank you. The sequel to Mad Max, titled Road Warrior, has been available on Blu-ray for a while now, but now we finally have the original. No word on the release of the third film, Beyond Thunderdome, and there's also a fourth film in the works. Mm -hmm. This release also includes a DVD copy and extras include filmmaker commentary, a documentary on the film phenomena that is Mad Max, and a second documentary titled, quote, Mel Gibson, The Birth of a Star. <clears throat> it also includes the, a, quote, new to the U.S. original Australian audio track, unquote, as well as the dubbed American track. Next up, Splice, directed by Vincenzo Natale from Cube and starring Adrian Brody. This film tells the story of two genetic engineers who specialize in splicing DNA from different species to create hybrids. But things take a turn for the unexpected and scary when they use human DNA in one of their experiments. Extras include a digital copy and a behind-the-scenes look at shooting the film. Also released this week, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are undead. Yep, you heard right, undead. It's a vampire twist on the 1966 Tom Stoppard play that was adapted into a 1990 film starring Gary Oldman and Tim Roth. This version stars Jake Hoffman, son of Dustin Hoffman, who has to direct an off-Broadway play titled Ro Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Undead, but for some reason those involved with the play begin dying as the premiere approaches. This film toured the independent film festival circuit last year, and it was filmed with the red digital cinema camera. So with a resolution of 4520 by 2540, this has to look good on Blu-ray. Other releases include 30 Days of Night, Dark Days, 2001 Maniacs, Baseball, The Tenth Inning, 1992's Bad Lieutenant, Beauty and the Beast, The Blair Witch Project, Blue Mountain State Season 1, Bones, the complete fifth season, Delgo, The Exorcist, 2006's Fingerprints, Grindhouse, Hard Candy, High Tension, The Human Centipede, <clears throat> 2010's The Karate Kid, The Last of the Mohicans, The Last Rites of Ransom Pride, The Maltese Falcon, 2009's My Bloody Valentine in 3D, but not the type of 3D that you need a special TV for. 2010's A Nightmare on Elm Street, Oxford Murders, Peanuts Holiday Collection, Robocop Trilogy, Rocky 2, II, Rocky 3, Rocky 4, Rocky 5, that okay, covers it all, The Secret of Kells, 2002's Secretary, Stargate Universe, The Complete First Season, 2006's Sisters, The Treasure of Sierra Madre, Troll 2, 2003's Wonderland, and The Year Without Santa Claus. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. 
With more than 15 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, my Netflix queue is serving up the 1998 director's cut of the sci-fi thriller Dark City in 1080p Blu-ray complete with a 7.1 soundtrack. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among a large and expanding number of devices, streaming TV episodes and movies are Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PlayStation 3 game console, and the Nintendo Wii console. Find movies you love easily. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Watch as many movies as you want, shipping is free, and there are no late fees or due dates. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. As fate would have it, the testbed Apple TV 2 that was supposed to arrive three days after we taped showed up this morning. So my entire iTunes setup was at home and not available for testing before we shot. By the way, if you can't see the Apple TV, it's because it's the little tiny black hockey puck sitting in front of the little tiny black television on the little tiny black stand. This thing, yeah, to say that they have radically altered the design of the Apple TV, kind of an understatement. It's smaller, it has no heat issues, which I'm a big plus of, and of course the fabulous silver wand remote. And perhaps my favorite thing about the update is the update to the Apple remote application that came out last night, which has actually gesture-based control. So if you don't want to use the silver wand of doom, you can use your iPhone or iPod touch, or I assume your iPad. I haven't tried it on the iPad yet. So snappy performance. Yes, very right snappy there. performance, actually. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. The video quality, it's pretty much like the Roku box. It all depends on what you're looking at. So we got a rented copy of Kick-Ass, which if I can properly use my sophisticated new remote, and I hit play. Look, it looks like an Apple TV. I hit play again. Maybe I should use the silver one. <laughs> we resume playing. I, I will say it's 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 just as is sort of like levels of menu annoying as Apple TV has always been. Um, now it's authorizing because that's what it likes to do. It's funny somebody was kind of whining about the Roku wasting a lot of your time as you set up individual channels on the Roku, I, a, a reviewer online, and I'm like, look, this wastes your time every time you try to play content. So <laughs> we turn the volume down on this one. But this is an HD download on demand, and this oh, okay. is spectacular. Oh, um, I don't see a lot of compression yeah, artifacts. For a downloaded 720p. Although the motion right there was a little funky. That's the TV. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? But like the Roku box, it depends on the quality of the source. Uh, uh, iTunes or Netflix movies that are heavily compressed, well, you notice it. It's kind of interesting, the Netflix, right? So as I dig back through the menu system, if you look under Internet, we go to Netflix, and if you have a Netflix account, you get access to their movies. And uh, let's go to suggestions for you. This should be kind of terrifying. Uh, Young Victoria. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Um, so we're going to start playing the movie. One of the interesting things is the fast forward and rewind on this doesn't really exist. It gives you a time on the bottom, but doesn't actually do any scanning on it, so. Oh, you don't get the little thumbnail pop-ups that go left and right scrolling? Well, look at it. No thumbnail pop-ups. Ew. So if you know, oh, wait, no, that's not it. Either. There it goes. So basically, it'll, if you know what time you're fast-forwarding to, you're good to go, but without that, you're kind of in trouble. So let's hit play on that one. Hopefully 99 don't. cent TV rentals are pretty nifty, um, but I think I'm still gonna prefer buying seasons uh, through iTunes, which is still available, and do 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 TV shows. Go to top TV show. Oh, we'll just go straight to Glee because that is Roger's favorite. And Ding. look, 99 cents, and you can start buying stuff. So Glee season one. And Roger just said in my ear, Glee's awesome. Um, I can't really comment on the quality of the streaming because, as I mentioned, my entire iTunes setup isn't in the office. So I think it's a test streaming my personal collection of audio and video. But other folks who have gotten their Apple TVs uh, this week seem to be doing just fine with that. The interesting thing about this, 99 cent rentals. You cannot download or purchase content through the Apple TV interface. You've got to go to your computer to do that. Something that's going to be fun to play with is a new AirPlay feature, working with iPhones, iPads, Airport Express, and 
AV receivers and I assume HDTVs to stream content from iTunes or your collection or iTunes online or your personal iTunes collection to various devices in the house. That's, I think that's going to be ample sort of on-road into home theater as they start trying to crush it. No applications, i.e. the iOS applications from the iPhone or the iPad, but Apple said there wouldn't be. I would imagine apps will be adopted over time as they work out the interface and figure out how to tell everybody that to use the apps, they're going to need some kind of a touch screen device, like an iPod Touch or an iPad. Uh, or you can jailbreak your Apple TV, since it turns out the latest iOS jailbreaks are working with this box. So there are people who are running apps on it already. I would love to see Hulu Plus to go with Netflix. I really wish it was 1080p, even if there isn't much 1080p content that isn't homegrown or downloaded illicitly. I, should I go to the pros and cons? I'd like to hear a few. Okay, pros. Nice heft, quality feel. It's an Apple build. It's a nice product. Fast setup, especially for existing iTunes users. Netflix, iTunes, YouTube, all available on the fly. Cheap 99 cent TV rentals. It's smaller, more subtle, and not nearly as hot. And that was a big complaint with the, the Apple TV. Too much componentry. Poor ventilation. That thing would roast hard drives if you weren't careful. Cons. No, it, it, ah, no 1080p, which isn't very future-proof. I smell, if this takes off, I smell an iPod, iPhone-esque 12 months upgrade cycle a la the iPod. You can't purchase anything through this because there's no hard drive. You've got to use iTunes for that. ATV, uh, Apple TV rentals won't work on any other computer or device. So you have 48 hours as long as you're at home with your Apple TV or traveling with your Apple TV. If you don't like iTunes, you will hate streaming to this thing. And like every other format, content comes and goes from the iTunes library. Where'd Sherlock Holmes go? It's like my go-to rental to test video quality through iTunes. Gone. But the truth is that can happen to Netflix or Voodoo or anybody else. Um, yeah, and by the way, if you own an Apple TV Part 1, Netflix 99 cent TV rentals will not be coming to your original Apple TV. It's interesting. Everybody's talking about what set-top box should I buy, and I gotta say, the popcorn hour is off the list until they kind of get it sorted, right? The C200, the original, uh, the popcorn media player, the pop box, excuse me, the, the pop box is, is kind of messy. The popcorn hour, C200 is still pretty solid yeah. from Ciabas. If, if you have a huge amount of like, I downloaded it off the internet, I own it kind of content. Apple TV is obviously the iTunes media player. It seems fairly centric, though. If you don't already use iTunes or have an Apple product already, right. you probably want to look elsewhere. Right. I'm thinking for that. For me, it's the home theater PCs really are, are still among my favorite devices, mm -hmm. just for flexibility. You, you can play anything on there. You can, through manipulation, of course, either through software or adding different types of hardware to it, depending on what you want to do. But that flexibility is something I really like. And mm -hmm. the hard part for me, at least with this, you have one big consistent interface for video, music, and probably your pictures too. I'm assuming yeah. you've got all of that. So, uh, simplifying an interface for somebody with a content with content they already own, that that could probably work for a lot of people, but. I need a little bit more flexibility in terms of what I deal with on my own stuff, but yeah, the, the I like the new size. This is this just this just screams at me. Oh, stick me to the back of the TV. <laughs> you now, although out. you lose the IR then, so or maybe stick it to the bottom or the top. Or to the top. Get your double stick tape out. Um, Roku X, XDS, awesome Netflix player. Hulu is Hulu Plus is coming for it. Uh, big downfall of that is unless you want to hack around creating a private channel to stream content from your home collection, you have to drag movies or audio or pictures from your home collection onto a USB drive, plug the USB drive into the Roku box, that'll either drive you nuts or not drive you nuts. Um, yeah, and then there's the Boxy box, which everybody, big splash at CES, delayed because of the Tegra chipset, wouldn't play 1080p video. That one's gonna be interesting because it's essentially become a home theater computer with the Boxy box interface on top of it, which means they've got enough power to, a lot of do, it, uh, to do a lot of interesting things. But it's gonna be interesting to see what their content partners are like and their codec support. Totally. So I, I just say, oh, and, and before I forget, by the way, there's now HDTVs that can play Netflix, Amazon Video On Demand, the superlatively awesome Voodoo streaming video on demand, plus umpteen other partners. By the way, those feature sets are being built into Blu-ray players. Yeah. So the box is basically being absorbed by the TV. If you're buying a new TV, it's a mess, dude. Uh, actually, one of my questions is also, is I had a bunch of stuff that was Apple TV only and I purchased on my old right. Apple TV. And I don't know if there's actually a way to get it so I can play it on this, because iTunes won't see it, although it might be able to back it up. I got a lot of beating on this thing to do. We'll let you know more as it reveals itself, because you know what? Apple never stops. Nope.
except when they feel they have you locked down, and then, then we won't talk about it. <laughs> Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace.com. They're not going to lock you down. They're going to make it easy for you to build an amazing web space. Web space, a website, a personal portfolio, a store, a blog, whatever you want to put on the web. No matter what your coding experience is, Squarespace is going to give you the tools to make an amazing, gorgeous, high-end, complex website that is yours without having to spend a metric ton of money to do it. And you know what? What's really cool? Squarespace offers every user 24-7 support. No expensive contracts, no mayhem, no waiting around for an email four days later. It's pretty slick. And you know what else is slick? Squarespace's iPhone app. They did a pretty cool update to it. And they've got a bunch of new features like full HTML blog editing on the go, comment moderation, which means you can be sitting on the train and dealing with the chucklehead saying nasty stuff in your blog. Yay. <laughs> Get push notifications if you want to approve new comments. You can mark existing comments as spam, reply to comments, quite a bit more, all from inside of your iPhone. Look, many of the internet's most traffic web spaces, powered by Squarespace, they scale as traffic increases. So if you suddenly find yourself the center of a viral attack, well, I shouldn't say attack, viral sort of, when things go well and a lot of traffic hits your web space, you're not going to get a $10 million bill and your site's not going to go down. As a matter of fact, a lot of the personal pages of Revision 3 hosts and personalities are hosted on squarespace.com. Check it out, people, and do yourself a favor. If you decide to try squarespace.com, you get to do it for two weeks for free, then they're gonna ask you to pony up and pay for it. Use the code HDNation when you do. You'll get 10% off your order for the lifetime. So basically, you start a site, it runs forever, you got 10% off until you're done. That's a cool deal. Check it out, people. Hey, you got a question about Odyssey and their spiffy multi-EQ surround sound tuning tech? Email hdnation at revision3.com. It looks like we're going to have a chance to interview some technical types from Odyssey in the near future. Cool. Yes. I like I'm very that. excited. Should be a fun one. Viewer questions. Dan's looking for his very first Blu-ray disc. He writes in, guys, I love your show. Thanks, Dan. We bought our first Blu-ray player to enhance our 47-inch Vizio 1080p HD TV. We have yet to buy our first HD movie. You can rent, you know. He says, I now have in my wallet a $30 gift card to a big box store that's burning a hole in my pocket. If you were in my shoes, or if I was in his shoes, regardless of genre or rating, what would be your first Blu-ray movie? After watching the movie, I want to feel that buying the new player was a great decision. Thanks, Dan in Netherland, Texas. Thirty bucks. Okay, can't go over that. Okay. So I was gonna say something like, uh, like Life from the BBC series, right. or the one that came before that, Planet Earth. Those two are just visually mind blowing, but they might be a little bit over that price point. I, I like Oprah, but the David Attenborough. I prefer the oh, David yeah. Attenborough version. Always David. I, I love Oprah. She's a phenomenal human being, but I prefer the David Attenborough narration. Um, Transformers come to mind. Iron Man one or two. Cars, Kung Fu Panda, Wall-E, I Am Legend, Dark Knight, Band of Brothers, Casino Royale, Hot Fuzz, Watchmen. Um, I'd say the newer movies that yeah. were shot digitally and transferred really well, those were always going to look a little bit better, maybe. Well, usually, than older flicks, right. as a rule, unless it's something special. That's been, oh, the, if you're Wizard a fan of, of The Wizard of Oz, The Wizard of Oz transfer is mind blowing if you're a Wizard of Oz fan. If you want to have some fun, check out the Blu ray picture quality tier list. Uh, another AVS forum link, we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, it's, it's actually a pretty phenomenal list. Uh, Let's see if I can remember my high school Latin. Uh, Oculi plus vident quam oculus. Uh, several eyes see more than only one. Basically, people weigh in on what they think are like sort of the platinum, gold, bronze, silver, bronze kind of what they think is are the they pick movies and they talk about whether they think they are the best quality or the not best quality. I'll just add Dark Knight too. Especially yeah. the scenes that were shot in IMAX are just. I said that. Oh, did you? I'm, I'm late. Late yeah. to the game. Dark it, but it's a, it's a list, great movie. There's, I, there's, look, you, it, you watch about, the show, there's... You should have told us what genre movies you like. It would help narrow it down a little bit for you. <laughs> well, it's like... You know, I don't think we listed a comedy that okay. was on that. How about... Uh, Got Ghostbusters 20, 25th anniversary edition just came out. That... That transferred really well. That What's the Hangover movie in Vegas? Oh. The Hangover. <laughs> that is, okay, that's the funniest movie of whatever year they came out in. <laughs> I thought about buying that when I was on my little spree this morning, I had to buy that. but I was like, if I bring that home and my wife sees it, she may never let me back to Las yeah, Vegas, even doomed. though it's for work. All right. 
<laughs> Jeff writes in, I recently stepped up to an Integra DTR 50.2 from an Integra 7.8 AVR. Both are amazing receivers, but I have a question regarding the whole 7.1 thing. Most of the new Dolby True HD and DTS Master encoded Blu-rays are still stuck with 5.1. What's up with this? Are the studios going to catch up? Is it a waste at this point to even get a 7. Dot something or now 9. Dot something AVR if most movies are still in 5.1 surround sound? Thanks again. Keep up the good work. Jeff. Oh, boy. So I, I've, I've, I've done this two or three times. Okay. Um, what? I've searched. Searching for the 7. Dot, the elusive 7.1 movie. At one point I had a list, and I've, I've lost this, the link to this amazing list, but basically you can search around Blu-ray.com. There's a couple other Blu-ray websites. And if my research is correct, because I couldn't find the really cool uh, maintained list, it looks like there are less than 257.1 Blu-rays. There are literally thousands of Blu-ray titles out. I would say, though, the last few movies I've been getting from Netflix, a lot of them mm -hmm. have been in the last, say, four years. They're all being sent to me with DTS 7.1 Master right. Audio. So I'm, I, I'm not going to say that there aren't many of them out there, but there are more than I thought there would be. Right. So there is some support for that audio standard. We, we need to get our audio engineering friend from, from L.A. back on to talk about this. But I, cause 7.1 is cool, but audio encoding evolves faster than end users adopt it, right? Movie, the movie companies are like, we got a bazillion 5.1 surround sound systems, and we got like eight. 7.1 users out there, so they go for the 5.1 because they cover the, that's the blanket that covers the most users. This is a long way of saying we expect <laughs> more support for 7.1 titles or more 7.1 titles in the future. So you, you may want to factor that into your long-term ownership of home theater equipment. I'm really hoping, too, <laughs> they have put out more audio tracks um, in Blu-ray format, just right. with, the, with the enhanced lossless formats they have there, like DTS and Dolby Digital. Uh, you want to hear some opera. That, I'd like to see more music be released in those formats, because the DVD and SACD never well, the really concerts, took off. more so than the albums. So, I just, I just, I love my audio. You want to read Todd's question? Yeah. Or Todd's statement, actually. Oh. <laughs> and finally, Todd writes in, hey, I saw you guys bashing Apple TV for only supporting 720p. Well, was I bashing? I, yes, 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 you were. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, and someone told me that most of the HD video streamed across the internet is only 720p or less, including our own beloved show. I suppose this is because of bandwidth limitations. I was wondering if this is true, and what is the bandwidth requirements for something or for someone to get, say, 1080i video streaming, if and when it will be available. Also, I have a TiVo and can get video through Amazon, which downloads the content to my hard drive for watching when I want to. Is this better quality than live streaming? Thanks for the show. I've learned a lot from you guys. Signed, Ted, in Bountiful, Utah. Bountiful. Bountiful. There's a bounty of goodness in <laughs> Bountiful, Utah. I love that name. So, uh, well, let, let's go backwards. Okay. Because for the TiVo thing, it, it all depends on whether TiVo is downloading the same files as streaming or not. One of the nice things about not streaming your media is that you don't have to worry about maybe some kid down the neighborhood stomping on the cable TV network. In, or stopping on the cable TV internet totally. and, and suddenly, you know, because... Cause, Real-time performance isn't critical. Yeah, for streaming video. Totally. And, and if for some reason all of a sudden your bandwidth goes down, your video quality goes down or, or cuts out completely. Um, and also I should point out that the reason, one of the reasons uh, other than bandwidth that uh, HD Nation is in 720p is because our cameras in our studio or 720p and will be for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one quick thing, too, about any particular video resolution. If somebody's talking about just resolution, that really doesn't mean anything. Right. You have to also consider what codec it was encoded in and also what is the bit rate. Uh, if you don't know the other two things, the resolution by itself really doesn't tell you much. I mean, you can squeeze a 1080p signal down to a, a dribble, yeah. and you can still call it 1080p, but it's going to look like garbage. It'll look like It'll Atari so graphics, like Atari 2600 exactly. graphics. Exactly. Very pixelated the by the time you get down that low. So. You know, you can have a, an, take like a DVD stream, that can go up to 10 megabit. Mm -hmm. Most of your online HD providers, they're going maybe five megabit. And that's, if that. If that, but it's also because they're using different codecs too. Right. So if you have like say MPEG-4 is twice as efficient as MPEG-2. Then you can get more And you're using equal bit smaller. rates yeah. at the same resolution, then you could say that, well, you can either get twice the quality or, or half the file size with, right. with the more efficient codec. It's a hard thing to kind of get your head wrapped around, but that's, that's the gist of it too. And, you know what? For me, it, it's resolution, sure, but it's also what bit rate are you putting behind right. that? I, given equal resolution, I want more bit rate to make it look better. Yes. Blu-rays go to 40 megabit, and that video looks awesome. The 1080p stream at 40 megabits per second, that's a lot of pixels. That's, well, that, that, that would be the benchmark. That's the, that's that, the gold that is standard. The, that is the perfection. Most of us can't get, you know, 
10 megabits, much less 40 mega, mega, mega bit, mega, bigger megabits, megabits mega into bit. our houses. Um, I've seen estimates for 1080p sizes or streams anywhere from 20 to 50 to 200 or 400% larger, right? Because 640 by 480, and, and most of the video on the, on the web, if you think YouTube is the biggest slinger of web on the video, and actually I think they aren't. Apparently Major League Baseball is. It's an interesting argument. Don't want to get into it. Um, but typical YouTube, right? You open up a YouTube web page, unless you've set things uh, differently is a is like a what is a 360p stream, which is a pretty small window. Totally, and that 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 you have no idea what the person did on the back end. They could have even worsened that quality right. by just over compressing it before they even uploaded it. Yeah, so. a lot of the pundits are talking about how you shouldn't care that the Apple TV is 720p. In one sense, they're right. You know what? Very little content available online is in 720p. However, you might in another year or two as more 1080p content is available or is available for download, right? Case in point, YouTube going 1080p, and I think more as a technology demonstration than anything anybody in the real world is going to use 4K video. And they're Google. They have mad yes. cash, and they have all of the servers in the world and all of the bandwidth in the world. If you want to see something cool, check out the Toy Story trailer in 1080p, you're going to have to do it on a reasonably power, powerful computer or one that has uh, flash support because flash 1080p won't play on most people's computers if oh. they don't have a decent, basically a fair amount of CPU or, or a decent graphics card. To exactly. Throw at. And if you haven't upgraded those flash drivers in a while, <laughs> upgrade they, them. they have hardware. GPU acceleration now for the NVIDIA ATI, or I guess it's all AMD now, NVIDIA and AMD platforms as far as your graphics needs go. Yeah, if, if you want to have some fun, check out YouTube's uh, youtube.com slash my underscore speed and roll the test video in 720p HD to see, uh, see what it looks like on your system. They actually have a real-time tally of what that quality of video looks like on your machine given the amount of bandwidth you're able to tap through your network. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to try that myself. Yeah, and that's and that's obviously, you know, as, as much slag as I like to sling at Apple for not being 1080p on the Apple TV, the reality is, is for a lot of people, they don't have the bandwidth to support streaming 1080p video because it takes a decent pipe. And, and unless you can get these files into, like, a computer to look at them, to right. see file sizes and what was, how it was encoded and what resolution, it's really hard to make direct comparisons about any of this stuff. Yeah. It, it, subjectively, though, you know what your eyes tell you, so... 1080p MPEG-4, as much bandwidth as you can get. That's kind of like the top of the line, and then it kind of rolls downhill from and, there. And like, and like the person wrote in saying that, look, when I download a show, that looks pretty good because you have that extra time. You right. tend to spend all the time you want downloading a show because you're not worried about you know, the, the real-time performance of your Internet connection or something like that. And it's, once the video is there, and if it took all night to get it, and it looks beautiful, you know, and that experience is fine compared to say, well, I want to watch it right now, and it, is, <laughs> it needs to stream, that can give you some problems. So. Anyway, <laughs> cut myself off. <laughs> hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So do send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can always find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash hdnation. And you can find links regarding everything we talked about in today's show on the show notes on the show page at hdnation.tv. Hey, plus you'll find all the links to subscribe to the show. So subscribe and watch. And until next time... Thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. Hey, and I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week.